building SAP business technology platform from a security perspective. And uh, today um, joining me is Alexander Meyer from Null Factor. And uh, yeah, Alexander, uh, we yes. are knowing each other for about two years, if I'm not mistaken, roughly, right? Uh, it's longer than two years, Mark. Is it, is it I guess it's more years? like three or four years, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, uh, you're getting me. Yeah. Um, yeah, but let me just say first, uh, th first of all, let me thank you for the invitation. Very yeah, much, thank you for joining. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, qu quick, quick remark on on Null Factor and Alexander. So uh, Null Factor is young on the market, but like actually, you are an old dude in the SAP security field already. Um, mm -hmm. So you uh, you are responsible actually for a couple of security advisories that uh, that have been released by SAP. Uh, thanks to your research, and um, like as we as we got to know each other, uh, you were the the team lead, or building up a team um, at a at a security um, um, service company around of the topic of SAP security. Um, so you're you're one of these people actually joining from the security field into the whole topic of SAP. While for me, it's actually just vice versa. I'm from an SAP uh, background joining security. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward uh, uh, to see what Null Factor is, uh, is about to, to, to do in that, in that field. And uh, already announcing that, um, that um, Null Factor is one of our training partners when it comes to um, conduct um, uh, security trainings around of SAP. And um, yeah, that's... Um, that's awesome. Um, so mm -hmm. with our, you know, constantly growing number of experts being trainers and authors sharing their knowledge around of that topic. So applause for that. Yeah. yeah. But um, just, just a quick remark, uh, uh, like um, mostly we're like not only doing trainings, but we're also focused on, on doing penetration tests and security assessments for companies. So the training partners with you, that's that's a very very nice, uh, yeah. What you say like a side gig for us, especially like sharing the knowledge, um, expanding our horizon, yeah. But mostly, I would say my my day to day job is conducting security assessments with customers, like enterprise clients, helping them secure their SAP systems, um, including infrastructure, software, ABAP coding, roles and authorizations, like stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's very important. Like we always work with practitioners in that field who like you know getting their hands real dirty on on uh, on all of these different things uh, because that is actually the valuable experience also learners can get out of a training. Um, yeah. So as we are talking about BTP, just giving a hands on remark on from what SAP from, from from SAP's point of view what BTP uh, is supposed to be and yeah SAP describes it as a as an adoption um, or as a way of adapting cloud operations based on uh, infrastructure as a service technologies uh, like because BTP can run on AWS GCP Ariba um, Azure and so on, and transform opportunities with fully managed platform as a service offerings, right? Um, so basically, yeah, it's a cloud. Right? It's a cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it doesn't really, or it doesn't very much matter to you in the end, despite of, let's say, for example, regulatory or compliance purposes, what is going to be the infrastructure as a service provider beneath uh, because like um, BTP makes this transparent to you. It doesn't really matter to you if it's on AWS, GCP, or, or something like that. Yeah, it's a it's a cloud and it's a it's a cloud platform. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, like the very important part is uh, as as Alexander and I also recognized and got requests from customers. Well, like you know, we have the old classic way of doing access management and authorization management in SAP, and now now there's that new world. Um, and how we actually can we move on that or or bringing those things together? 
And um, Alexander, from your point of view, what are actually the chances and risks for, for, for SAP customers on that as, as you've recognized them, you know, making their way on this transformation and journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of guess I have to keep myself a brief, right? So just one or, one <laughs> or two sentences. Um, because otherwise I could fill up the hour just with me ranting No, but, uh, yeah, I think the chances and risks are, um, I think on the both sides kind of great, like there's a lot of chances for, uh, like, especially if, if there's like new customers who really are into a lot more going into an agile development or an agile direction with their company and also have special uh, special use cases and needs that are specifically fit for the cloud. I, I think this is a very great opportunity to com combine the world SAP mm -hmm. with the cloud world. Um, but in terms of risks, I also see an equally great problem or amount of risks that could be due to uh, um, the way that the cloud, like especially how, how SAP uses it is so much different from the old world of, of SAP, like especially on-premise systems, not, not speaking about software as a service solutions, um, like success factors, for example, but let's mm -hmm. just say, for example, like on-premise systems, like the, the management, the processes, the people, uh, the guidelines, like the governance, um, like everything is going to be much, much different when you go into the cloud. So I, I think the greatest risks are like underestimating the differences and also um, underestimating how much uh, like like effort is needed to to change the teams, change the knowledge. knowledge. Right. Well, I guess we still have somebody. Mute somebody. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I totally see this with, with our customers too. Um, that, you know, SAP, BTP as part of their cloud journey uh, becomes uh, yet another challenge uh, to address. And um, I think, you know, just coming up to the next question, what does it mean for security administrators and developers? I think like it's a, it's a really a paradigm shift. Um, they have to, um, you know, they have to um, take care of when moving from a classic on-premise SAP environment to the cloud. It's like it's it's a completely new technology stack. First of all, no matter if you're you, if you're still, for example, developing ABAP in the cloud, um, and and all of the concepts that you have been used to in the in the past years. Um, they have to be refought or, you know, the new concepts uh, learned. Um, or, or what do you think? Like, is the, what, what's the, what would you say is the touch point um, for, let's say, a, a classic security, SAP security or authorizations administrator to, to uh, SAP BTP? Yeah, I guess the first, I guess his first reaction, his or her first, first reaction would be con confused. Like, I guess that the first reaction would be, okay, um, well, my job is still there, but it completely changed in terms of the responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Like I would say, especially the, the authorization and authentication model that SAP has for the BTP is very much like a bottom up process where mm -hmm. it starts with the development and basically goes up from there. Whereas in the old world, especially with ABAP, you could always, you know, at, at least when you could see, okay, there's an authentication uh, check. And if there isn't one, you know, there's, that's basically a one and zero uh, mm. uh, idea, but with the BTP, it's going to be, and I, I think we're going to see this later in the discussion and throughout this meeting that um, like for the, the developers are like increasingly in the position of, okay, we're responsible now for for um, developing the certain actions and role templates that you know should be employed for the role-based access model mm -hmm. um, and the administrators later they basically their job is reduced to okay we assign things we click mm -hmm. uh, and, and we, we manage the assigning of authorizations um, and that and to a lesser extent even than you would have in the the old world you know where you have a multitude of tools 
So in the B2B world, it's it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be a shift, like you say, yeah. paradigm shift, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you, you kind of have to appreciate <laughs> the change, I guess, um, mm -hmm. when, when when going that route. So um, uh, like in, in Germany, like the, the saying is, uh, um, you, you don't teach a dog, uh, old, old dog new tricks. Um, but like in that, in that sense, you have to, <laughs> uh, when, when moving from, from classic, um, SAP to, to the cloud. Right. Um, but yeah, coming, coming back to what you've mentioned, uh, like we have some new concepts here, uh, starting with the, with the identity or the, like the, the meaning of an identity provider, uh, where, for example, in a classic SAP environment, we actually don't have like a, an external identity provider, but like the user master is typically within the system. Um, yes. Yeah. So, what, what's your what's your remarks on that? So, when starting with the concept of having to basically having to have like an external identity provider or or a user master. Yeah, I, I guess it's the the basic gist of the cloud is that it has a lot of bit different moving parts, and all mm -hmm. these moving parts. Uh, you know, like the identity provider is a moving part, could be located, you know, on premise, in the cloud, another mm -hmm. provider, like completely separated from SAP. And then you have other moving parts that care for authentication, authorization, application routing. And these different parts, they all are connected over the network, like in a cloud environment via trust relationships, like OAuth flows or summer authentication. So it's going to be a lot different than, you know, the old model way, like you say, everything's on premise, everything's located right inside the, the, the service stack. Um, and yeah, the identity provider is basically the first, the first surprise for, for people coming that are new to the, the SAP BTP cloud is okay. Um, the cloud itself doesn't store any users. So mm -hmm. first you have to have some type of identity provider. Um, it, actually could still be an on-premise SAP system, but it, you know, there's some other steps involved, like, you know, bridging the network gap between the on-premise systems or using some provisioning service to get the users from, from the on-premise system into the, the cloud. So there's some, you know, there's more friction involved and you first have to have a good idea. Okay. Where are my users coming from? Like mm -hmm. you have an LDAP server or like an, um, like the typical example for SAP BTP cloud would be uh, like in Microsoft Active Directory that's like like located in Azure, for example. Like that mm -hmm. would be a cloud service that's like uh, internet facing and provides all the different uh, trust relationships capabilities yeah. that we would need to connect it to the to BTP cloud, for example. Yeah, that would be a typical example. Yeah, like so yeah, you so you, you have, have to, to make up your mind at first, like where are my identity stores rather than like, like here's the system and I'm just filling identities. Yeah. I'm just filling up users. Yeah. 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 I, I guess that's the first step is identifying the, the source of the users. Yeah. yeah. Well, like as a, as a, as a result to that, um, you know, we have the account model around of uh, BTP. So we have the, the global account and like the next thing you need to make up your mind on when you have located your identities is okay, how do I structure the accounts, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's also, and it, that, that really, to, uh, from, from what I got to realize is you already have to know to a very large extent um, what are you going to do with uh, SAP BTP in terms of, you know, designing your sub-account structure accordingly, right? Yeah, so so I, I would say, like like you say, Marco, it's it's not so easy to just start with BTP and then just take it from there and then just iterating. I guess it's much, much more, it's much easier to first figure out, okay, these are the basic concepts um, and this is how we're going to design it. Um, yeah, like, like you mentioned, global accounts, basically global account is like a one-to-one -one relationship with a, uh, like a licensing. So I, maybe I, I, I have a single licensing model where I pay uh, per use, so per usage. And this is a license and I have this one license and this one license means I have this one global account. And then I have multiple uh, sub accounts. I could also have different directories. So, but not, mm. not, you know, focus too much on that, but basically you have multiple sub accounts, multiple, um, and these sub accounts basically are in like encompassed unit 
like so every kinds of services that you have or the applications like host it in a sub account and there's not so much ways that sub accounts can interact with each other they're kind of like isolated mm -hmm. So I, I guess the, the best comparison to the old world would be to treat sub accounts as like SAP systems, like with system identifiers. Mm -hmm. So one sub account could be like my production HR system, for example, like to make a very rough comparison. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a good uh, point of viewing it from like, let's say from an old world's perspective, yeah. Um, yes, yeah. like you also have to incorporate into the sub account model, basically your, uh, let's say your development testing stages in, in that way. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And like, um, um, I think like the, the other part of that moving part of that is, is of course, uh, everything, which is around SUA and, and, and the app router, uh, as another yeah, maybe, dimension. Maybe you just go back one slide again, because I, I think we yes, used to have the, yeah, thank you. So, uh, the. XUA or XSUAA, uh, it's quite a mouthful. It's like an SAP own uh, um, like further development building on existing uh, authentication and authorization uh, element, which is very much common to the Cloud Foundry runtime. Mm -hmm. So just just to to uh, explain it, basically, you can have a sub account, and inside the sub account, you basically choose a runtime, and the runtime means this is going to be uh, um, the environment where I develop applications. And there could be, uh, so I, I think traditionally there was three or four different runtimes. There was the Neo, which is kind of being phased out. There was SAP's own home-baked solution. Then you have the uh, Cloud Foundry, which is like based on the, the open source mm -hmm. uh, runtime Cloud Foundry, which is able to give an environment uh, with VMs and containers to run pretty much any kind of application language that you want. And there's the other uh, lesser known, like the Kima environment, which is based on Kubernetes. And then also, um, wasn't there a fourth one? Or I'm missing something. Like uh, ABAP, the, the, the yeah, the ABAP environment. Yeah, <laughs> the ABAP environment, right. Yeah. So uh, because we, we, we can't, uh, of course, can't get rid of ABAP. So mm -hmm. there's like a, a SAP's, newer re revived uh, ABAP runtime, which is kind of still very much different from the traditional way ABAP environments run in inside on-premise systems like app application service. Um, yeah, but still this is, you, you choose a runtime and then you say, okay, I have to basically uh, make up my mind, what, what type of application do I want to develop, mm -hmm. right? So it's the same same idea. I first have to, get an idea what I want to do. And once I have the, the architecture in mind, then I can start building up my sub accounts, choosing my runtime and then building applications. Like, like just choosing one and then kind of, you know, going by that is going to lead into, I guess, not very uh, mature applications. So we'd always suggest, you know, like really thinking about what types of runtime to choose. Yeah, yeah. And like then, I think the the really interesting part is how actually like the the, the business role concept in BTP, uh, why XUA and and App Router then is supposed to play together um, to yeah. you know enable the access of a user to certain resources and and yeah apps actually as we as we as we would say right yeah yeah yes mm -hmm. so we kind of have a like like I mentioned before we we kind of split the difference. Um, different elements like authentication, authorization, routing, like all these different stuff is very much separated. Uh, and the, the app router basically is like a reverse proxy for, uh, for your applications. The access UAA, that's like an uh, authorization engine, which is built on Cloud Foundry, uh, Cloud Foundry software. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and basically to, to build applications, like let's say I have a sub account, I have chosen my runtime, let's say I have a Cloud Foundry chosen, and now I still have to understand like the different moving parts, because if I don't understand them, I can't develop even a basic, um, basic application, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I kind of, I kind of summarize it in, um, into, um, um, how do you call it? Um, ah, come on. Um, 
like you know with that with that business uh, business role concept um i i kind of i kind of summarize it that uh, that roles and scopes are going to be or are effectively as i've recognized um really in the in the responsibility of the developer in terms of how they are being uh, being designed i think that's that's really something yeah that's the new. most important part yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, like you cannot really make a one-to-one -one translation to the to the old way of, of defining roles and so on. And then actually the security administrator as we know it, or like, you know, the you would rather call it like a user administrator is then defining the actual role co uh, collections. Um, so like really, I, I, would, I would kind of say like the classic role in an, in an on-premise SAP uh, ABAP system is more than of the role collection and the role, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you could say the the administrator, the authorization, authentication, authorization administrator in the old world, like he had a lot of power. Like mm -hmm. he could create roles, which you know had specific authorization objects and and profiles included. Whereas now, basically, he stripped off that power. Like mm -hmm. the administrator um, doesn't necessarily get the power to define what actions and authorizations are included in a role like that's that's an, an uh, yeah, let's just just emphasize this i think this is the big single biggest change that people are going to get used to when dealing with with the btp like the developer now has to define in the application once it's deployed the, he deploys an instance of the access uia that's mapped to my application mm -hmm. so the access uia saves the state and the information about the roles and role collections and uh, also the scopes uh, to a, to an extent. So the XSUAA then saves it and that's basically programmed at the deployment stage. So I'm having yep. like, let's say a JSON file, which I deploy that creates the XSUAA instance. And, you know, then there's not much work to be left for the administrator. He just yep. then has to just map uh, row collections to users, has to make sure the mapping works automatically if some users come from uh, outside, like identity providers, like Active Directory, like they has to make sure that the mapping there works, but basically, yeah, he stripped a lot of his power. Um, yeah, yeah, and like what, what, I, what I saw is some of the issues at, at, uh, at my customers were like, uh, you really have to start in terms of the role definitions that um, that uh, developers agree on certain conventions. Um, like as there is nothing like, for example, an activity field in authorization object anymore, it can say like acti activity 01, 02, 03, uh, it, it, like it does have an implicit meaning. You don't have that on BTP anymore. You need, like you don't have that convention out of the box. You need yeah. to create it for your organization. Yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, so you could have a developer that says, oh, well, there's just a singular option. Let's say it's a scope called open file. Mm -hmm. And that's basically doing, let's say, like whole 100, 200, 1,000 lines of code and action. Whereas you have another developer who says, well, opening file from this system, from that API, from, you know, or, or you know, so you could be, completely granular, completely dependent on the, the code that you do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like you say, that the, I, I think because in, in the past, we used to have the situation where SAP already brought in a lot of best practices for, for industries by bringing in um, authorization objects for common, you know, common, you know, common transactions, like I, I'm opening a file, I'm right. reading a table. Um, I'm assigning some privileges. So this is like very standard stuff. And now like the developer has to make the choice. Like is up, this- up to, up to template roles, yeah. So also yeah, like template yeah. roles having this kind of pre-compiled and then you're actually starting stripping down and adjusting it, yeah. And so like, you have to make mm -hmm. it here from scratch by yourself, yeah. 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 So like I, I kind of ended up uh, <laughs> a couple of times trying to explain uh, XSUA. So you can actually already do it much, yeah. much better than I can. And then like, you know, not understanding it anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's a very hard concept to get into. Like if you wanted to understand it completely, you have to get into all different types of OAuth flows, for example. Right. So, uh, and also I think one of the problems is that 
like right now, customers have to choose, okay, do we go with the SAP's best practice route um, in, in, like to, to develop applications or what do we do our own stuff? Right. Like, mm -hmm. because there's also the risk that some people are gonna be like, some developers are gonna be like, okay, we want to validate tokens that are coming from the XSUAA um, to make sure you know there's the right authorizations for this and this user. But by doing that, basically, you kind of go around SAP's best practices that they developed. So basically, you have still have to follow SAP's best practices. So you have, I would say, not the worst of both worlds, but also like a very mixed bag. Mm -hmm. Like you have to follow SAP's best practices to a certain extent to not mess up complicated crypto stuff like OAuth flows, grants, token validation, um, not exposing tokens. But also at the same time, you have the flexi you have basically the 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 net that's missing. Like you're not going to get caught in in a safety net because you have some best practices of the industry with, with you know predefined transactions, predefined authorization objects. You don't have that anymore. You're you're basically already like catching up on the on the uh, like you know uh, the, the the next questions which you're about to ask, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. th that's really like a crucial point to to saying and in, in terms of also like the maturity of the of the currently provided security features and tools like from my point of view i have to admit like uh, compared to the old world to the classic world uh, the analytic analytics tooling is is rather than something you really have to dig into and and you know deeply understand of um you know working with locks and so on um um for example to be able to assess certain kind of of access scenarios right who then actually is really about to have access to what? Um, that's actually from, that was, uh, and still is for me the hardest part uh, in terms of, for example, conducting security assessments in that area. Yeah, yeah 100%, yeah. Because maybe just to, to uh, stick with that point for a second, uh, the problem is like, like, for example, you're at the customer doing an audit and the customer asks, well, how do we make sure that user XYZ only has authorizations to open files from that directory, but not all directories or read financial documents from just his account, but not all the other accounts. Mm -hmm. How do we make sure that this is the case? Like in the old world, we could you know, say, okay, there's certain authorization objects which are common to the you know, financial transactions and the processes. And then you could trace that, you could trace like in the code, you could trace in the system, mm -hmm. you could, you know, have different types of reporting tools in this case. And, and this is what we discussed earlier, right? So you have to get down to code level mm -hmm. because if you, if, if, if you all remember, we just talked five minutes before the developer has to define with the scopes has to define what actions are translated into roles, into role templates and role collections in the end that get assigned. Right, right. So you have to get down to code level to say for 100%, okay, this is the action that's triggered and that's the permission that's used, defined by the developer. And this permission is then translated into a role collection later on. And you yeah. have to get down to code level. That's the problem. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's a very much, very big problem. That's that, yeah, that's certainly challenging. Um, so kind of uh, go, going for that, uh, when when you as a customer need to start or want to start with uh, with the business technology platform, like what or who is actually a good fit for that? Um, mm -hmm. what, what, what do you what do you see at at, uh, at your customers? Uh, like for 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 which of them is it easier actually to start with compared to others? Yeah, I would say it's 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 easier for customers who also like maybe are much newer to the whole SAP world. Like mm -hmm. let's say older, more stable, bigger enterprise uh, customers, they have the problems that they have certain, you know, compliance rules and governance processes and uh, copying these processes in the cloud is basically at this time, uh, not really going to be possible, especially if you have a, a, a higher maturity level of your SAP security. So I, I think the B2B cloud is going to be much more attractive for 
younger, smaller, medium-ish size companies mm -hmm. who really want to, to iterate faster and, and use all the benefits of the cloud, like availability zones and low latency features and fall over um, yeah, and, and distributed data, basically data stores that are all located inside, identity providers were located, already mm -hmm. located inside the cloud, other clouds. Yeah, so these types of companies, the smaller already, you know, not so much stuck in their old ways. I think they're going to be have have a lot more benefits. Yeah. 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 Like I, I think certainly saying the obvious cloud affinity helps. <laughs> and yeah. um, and I, I think I would also say if to a certain extent you already used to run software fabrics uh in, in a way. So if you already kind of have approached DevOps, DevSecOps concepts, uh, and so on. Like then, it will be much easier for you to to use the technology of the BTP uh, to to apply that. Yeah, uh, kind of <laughs> like I was just thinking about uh, summarizing regarding specifically the security analytics tools. My kind of my point of view. Um, so uh, Stefan, so Ste Stefan Peach was the the head of SAP. Um, um, so don't don't take this personal. <laughs> I know I, I know that he's very very much aware of security, um, but like it's of course it's it's always a hard sell um, to 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 improve on security tools uh, rather than like the the next gen whatever feature. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but I I also recognize that for example with the GSC capabilities uh, supporting BTP and so on, there's there's there are a lot of things. Um, already have been improved and are also on the roadmap uh, on, on SAP side. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, like maybe just kind of summarizing uh, what, what security issues do you see at your customers using BTP at the moment? Um, so what, what are the typical mistakes? Mm -hmm. um, very curious about your opinion. I also have one on that, uh, that, that you see from a security perspective. Yeah, I, I would say the the biggest is uh, well, not necessarily the biggest, but one of the more prevalent issues is uh, one that we mentioned at the start, like thinking about your identity providers, mm -hmm. um, because in in the past, at least when it's all located inside a single system, um, it's much easier to get hold of the people that create the users who assign uh, profiles and um, and roles. But now, because the BTP cloud doesn't have a user store, you kind of stuck with, okay, there's you know some active directory somewhere and some other business unit is managing that. Maybe even a supplier is, is, is managing that. Maybe I'm not mm -hmm. even, uh, so I, I don't really know like what, what types of users are coming into the system. And many admins basically are left, you know, doing the, um, the, the matching so saying, okay, when a user with a certain attribute, a certain group, a certain name comes in, he gets automatically assigned um, certain role collections in the BT mm. for BTP applications. Um, because there's no other way than saying, okay, we have a mapping automatically, or we do it manually. And there's no other way. There's just these two ways. Like I map right. it, or I, assign, uh, and I can't manually assign role collections for 10,000 users. Yeah. But even uh, you know, kind of kind of putting it this way, maybe just just to uh, sorry to to interrupt, but like also the data quality of your user master uh, in in yeah. the identity provider is it, it like becomes much more significant than than before in in a classic SAP world. Like all of the issues you have outside of SAP technology with doing some Active Directory, uh, um, you know, um, attribute mapping and so on. This becomes now, if you if you have yeah, issues with that, you will also problem. have the same yeah. issues then with BTP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in the past, it's like, okay, we don't care about the LDAP. That's mm -hmm. like, that's a mess, but we don't care because the SAP system's kind of separated. But now yeah. it's like, okay, we have to take care about our, our user stores, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, like we're a little bit short in time, so I have to I have to make it a rush that we still can have the chance for for discussion. I, I kind of mm -hmm. kind of uh, kind of summarize it uh, when the developers and administrators when they have some uh, security related training, then like they can they they're 
much more aware of and have much better capabilities. Like for example, as uh, as part of, of the training that you're conducting throughout the Monkey Academy is, you know, uh, training uh, um, user administrators from the classic SAP world. Oh, by the way, like there's a SAML token. Um, and for example, to do to to be able to test certain things, you need to pass that SAML token uh, um, and need to have a look um, what is actually in there uh, with your with your test user to actually understand um, then also a certain authorization flow. And uh, yeah, if, if you got to know how to do that, um, rather than, for example, needing to search for the one point in one of the logs where you can where you can see what's going on. Um, so, you know, providing the capability to do te decent testing and so on, that, that really can make a difference from my point of view, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's basically forcing your developers to be better at security. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To better understand, like, the, the underlying flows and authorization and authentication concepts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you and I, we already concluded on some of, uh, some general recommendations kind of, uh, um, Sides of, uh, of of our discussion, um, is there anything you want to add on that? Um, um, yeah, let me yeah. see. Um, yeah, I I would say I, I would say what what would we have as feedback, especially from from the trainings that we did with, mm -hmm. with clients so far. I think it's uh, most people want to get their hands on BTP first before they start working with it because i think they're kind of afraid because now it's like in the cloud and a paper use model like once you click a a wrong thing like it's gonna you know get you get charged with like a ten thousand dollar bill or something mm -hmm. like like that what's when it's happening when you work with hyperscalers for example like the aws like lambda process mm -hmm. has been spinning up like to a ten thousand fold or something so i, I guess the the most important very, very basic recommendation, I would say, is just, you know, start with a trial version and just, you know, get your hands dirty because the trial version is still there and still free. I don't know how long or if SAP plans to ever phase that out, but, you know, as long as it's there, you know, use the opportunity to, to you know, play around with the trial versions to, to just, you know, get a feeling for the cockpit at least. Yeah, yeah. I would like, or really in general, not, not even for the neutral, but for the whole organization, don't rush through the evaluation and training phase when it, when it comes to mm -hmm. use BTP, because like you will pay it double or triple uh, down the line if you do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so... I, I think yeah, that's another, I think I have another tip. Yeah. Just as I'm thinking about it, I think uh, you also have to have some kind of like worst case scenario playbook when like a certain feature or API stops working. Mm -hmm. Because what, what we've seen, because we also built our training environment around, you know, a BTP cloud, one of the problems was that even if it says, you know, it's on demand, you know, services, like some services, you know, still have a hard time running up, creating instances can be difficult. Sometimes you have to open a support ticket. Sometimes things are getting phased out, like, that I mentioned the Neo runtime, like that was introduced um, only four or five years ago, but it's still being phased out by SAP mm. with a definite end of life date. So customers who invested, the uh, who, who did the investment um, to build some applications in the Neo environment now are basically screwed because in a couple of years it's going to be, you know, dead, and then they have to change their whole technology to adapt to something different. So yeah, I would that's say actually a good point. Uh, I just yeah. putting a link in the in the chat. Like there is no, that like there will be an end uh, certainly, uh, but it's not yet announced for. But they don't have a definitive end. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's like no no definite point in time yet. There's certainly still an uncertainty uh, when SAP shows up with the message. Uh, so there will be no uh, new customer onboarded. Yeah. Uh, mm. Into into new environment before the existing customer. At least there is no. No announcement uh, yet. Um, yeah, so uh, Alexander, thank you very much. I think we can continue. We could continue the discussion for for the next yeah couple of hours, for a couple right? of hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, like, still want to all give you the chance to uh, you know. I, I see like there are there are plenty of questions already 
um, in the in the chat. I'm not sure if we if we can take them all. Um, so, but I also want to um, all give you the opportunity to exchange with one another. I have to admit, um, like it's by far the session with the most participants we 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 yet ever had. Um, so um, it, it needs a certain amount of discipline. Um, um, so um, if you don't mind, we'll go over the question. If you have some new questions, um, then uh, please, um, yeah, um, put them into the chat. I will I will catch up them uh, up on them, and then 